Hi, my name's Steve Barrett. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of PR Week, and I'm really delighted to be here at Bank of America headquarters with Jim Mahoney, who's Head of Corporate Communications and Public Policy. Jim, uh, thanks for allowing us into your fantastic facilities, and wanted to just talk to you a little bit about uh, your role in the communications generally. Um, tell us, wh how, why is corporate communications so important to the C-suite? It used to be that you know it was underestimated, it wasn't valued, but now the C-suite in seems incredi in incredibly more engaged with it. So how does that work at Bank of America, and, and, and what, what's the sell, if you like, for corporate communications? Well, first of all, welcome to our headquarters here in New York City of the Best building we're very proud of. It was the first Platinum Leeds certified office tower in the world and it's one of the most environmentally advanced buildings in the world, and we're really proud of it. And we're thrilled to have you here, and thanks for having me uh, participate. It's to be here, Jim. Uh, participate with you here today, Steve. Um, I think uh, every company in the world now, large global companies, are very complicated. They're very diverse. They're doing a lot of different things. And they need an ability to tell the world what it is they do. You know, what are they about? What are they trying to do? What do they stand for? What are their values? How do their interests line up with the interests of the community and stakeholders? And it requires a corporate communications team to pull that all together and to create a narrative or a storyline that ties it together so that when people think of brand X or company X, they have a sense of what you're talking about and it's just not an amorphous uh, constellation of disconnected um, ideas or thoughts. And how do you measure that? And especially when you're trying to convince the C-suite that, you know, maybe we should invest a bit more in this. How do you measure the value of it and the effective, effectiveness of it? Well, I think part of it is the way the world reacts when events happen. If you have established a, a storyline or narrative where people understand what the company does, then when individual events take place, one-off type events, there's a context in which people put that. And, the, and it's, it's more easily understood it's more explainable, and frequently it's more forgiving because people realize it's in a broader context of other things the company's doing. The nightmare scenario is when some event, particularly a negative event, takes place. There's no context. It's a black box, and all the focus is on that one negative thing, which then projects out, and people assume the entire entity is riddled with the same kinds of negative dynamics that created that one episode. So it's, the, it's a context that's, that's critical to serve as a backdrop for when individual uh, events occur. Now at PR Week, we talk a lot about PESO, which is the mixture of paid, earned, shared, and owned media. Paid being advertising, earned being PR, shared being social, and owned being this really, you know, you becoming a media owner in your own right. So that means you've probably got to work a lot more closely with marketing and other parts of the company. How has that impacted what you do and what, what are the challenges of that and what are the big opportunities as well? Well, it's changed dramatically in the last decade or so as the technology has sort of blended everything together. I think a lot of times the difference between paid and earned uh, is actually, it, it blends together. Sometimes people don't even know which is which. There's uh, sponsored um, content that is now put on anywhere from PR week to, uh, to the networks, and um, it's blended together. So it's critical that the messaging, the narrative, the storyline be unified across both marketing and advertising. As you and I have talked about before though, Steve, there's a difference between marketing and corporate communications. They still remain, um, while critically important to be linked together, particularly on a, from a message standpoint, some of the tactics and some of the objectives do remain different, and I think the skill sets working in the two areas remain somewhat different as well. Yeah, some of that heavy lifting on the reputation side is not really in the, the, the realms of marketing, is it? Um, and coming to that, at some point, every company, every organizational brand is going to have some sort of crises or reputation problem. What would your three top tips be as a top communicator for dealing with those, um, especially in this age where social media means that something is around the world in seconds? Yeah, well, one thing is to be on top of it, monitoring. Monitoring the environment is critical because something can pop up that looks like nothing, and then three hours later, it's taking over the whole world. So monitoring is critical. The second thing I think is finding out the facts. And that may sound easy, but it's often very difficult. 
it's very difficult to find out exactly what's going on. And what you have to recognize is that people within an organization have their own interests uh, at stake. And so they're going to be telling you a set of facts that may be skewing things in their interest. And you have to be objective. You have to stand back. You have to double check. And you have to make sure that the facts that you're operating with are the real facts. And then I think probably the most important thing is in from a communication standpoint then is to tell the truth. It's to be forthcoming, it's to be honest, it's not to try to uh, obscure, mislead, deceive, twist around because it's going to come back to bite. And uh, so it's in your own self-interest, it's not just a moral high ground type of a thing. It's very much in your own self-interest to tell the truth, to get the facts out there as they are and make sure that those are the right facts that, that you're operating with. And while it sounds, it sort of sounds easy and straightforward, in the heat of a, of a moment, it can be real tricky. Absolutely. We see examples of that every week, don't we? And we right. write about them every week at uh, PR Week. So, Jim, thanks for joining us. Uh, great to be in your studio. Thanks for having us here. And uh, look forward to seeing uh, how your department progresses and how corporate communications progresses in the future. Well, thanks, Steve. I know PR Week is a great resource for my entire team. We learn a lot about it, not only about the things that are going on in our industry, but across the board. It's very helpful for, for our team to uh, have an opportunity to be, have an access to that broad array of information you put out every morning. And we really appreciate all the work you do to support the work we do. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it.